Welcome back. This is Emily of Chronically Fabulous for your weekly video. That's how much I care. Weekly. Um, today we are going to be covering teenage disability and public school because we we all know how fun that is. Um, so, okay. I don't really know how to like start with this because you have to cover like in school stuff first as well. <sighs> okay. Um, let's start off with talking to teachers and things like that. So, one of the big things that we as teenage disability people know is how to talk to our teachers and make sure that they understand what's going on with us. So, a lot of people know about IEPs and stuff like that, so independent education plan. Um, IEPs are very, very helpful, especially for people like us because you can you can kind of get like more time for assignments, get more time on tests, have accommodations made so you can write tests on computers. You have usually, I don't know if it happens other places, but in Toronto, in the school that I go to, actually I'm pretty sure it's the entire TDSB. But anyway, in the school that I go to, we have GLE, which I don't know what it stands for, to be perfectly honest, but it's basically a supervised spare period. Um, you have to stay in the classroom and you're supervised by a teacher, but aside from that, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want. You can read, you can write stuff, you can work on any subject that you want because it's not a specific subject. Um, and it's a really good thing to have, especially if you have something that like... You can kind of do in-class assignments and stuff like that in class, but also in GLE. And it's a good extra thing to have. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is elevators because elevators are very helpful in school. Um, in Toronto, a lot of schools, actually now that I think about it, have elevators. And in my school, we actually have two. Um, the big thing that we, as a school community, quote unquote, focus on, is being able to make sure that we keep track of the keys, because a lot of people like abuse the key system, and like take a good chunk of their friends, like four or five people at a time in the elevators when you're really not supposed to. But we give keys to those who need them. Um, and I don't want to say that like you have to, it's like a necessity that you have to have a key, but it kind of is. There's like a hierarchy of like what's necessary and what's not. But um, elevators are a very, very helpful thing in school. <sighs> um, another thing that I want to talk about, which hits, hits very close for me, is the issue of peer support and like student support. Um, I don't know if other people have gone through this or the people I was, I was friends with were just like assholes, but a lot of people have like run off on me and not stuck around because I'm kind of high maintenance. Not because I want to be or because I choose to be, but because I kind of am born to be. Um, I have no doubt that I am high maintenance. I have no illusion that it is very hard to be friends with someone who is not like normal or healthy. <sighs> but it still sucks because you think that you're friends with people and all of a sudden they're gone. Um, I don't know how to put this in the most like diplomatic way, but it's very hard on someone who knows very well that they're not normal or not healthy or not just not the same as someone else and think that those people are friends and then they're gone um like we don't expect you to understand we expect that even if you don't understand you'll support us because that's really all we need we're not expecting you to cure us we're not expecting you to make us better overnight like we just want friends that'll be there and if we end up canceling plans they're okay with it because they understand it's very, very sad. Um, and the last thing that we're going to cover that happens in school is medication. And I'm going to share a little anecdote with you before I get into it because it's a pain in the ass. So, I think it, yeah, it was this year actually. Uh, I'm in grade 11 right now and I was taking a drama course because when you're in Earl Haig or Claude Watson, more well known in Toronto, you need to take an arts course every single year. And I was like, okay, well, I could take photography, but I'm going to take drama because I took photography the past year and I wanted to, like, expand my horizons. 
little did I know that the teacher that I was going to have was a shithead. And that's not just like, oh, I can't believe it, this person's not letting me go to the bathroom even though I've asked seven or eight times in this period. It's just, it was more so she had it out for me. And it's not like, it's not like that normal thing where it's just like, oh, the teacher gave me a low mark, they must not like me. She had it out for me. Um, and she, several times, had been told my IEP allows this, this, and this, because I have very specific needs. And there was one time where I was like, okay, well, can I go take my medication? And I'm on a, like, like take-as-you-need type medication. It's a medication that you can't, it's not a preventative medication, so it can't just stop pain from happening. You have to take it when the pain starts. And it was probably about 15, 20 minutes into class, and I started to feel the pain coming. I was like, oh, fuck, okay. I'll ask you gotta, like, take my medication. I was like, okay, well, miss leave out name because I want to keep anonymity because I don't want people to like hate someone they don't know. Can I go take my medication? Oh, why didn't you take it like when the class or just before the class started? It started 15 minutes ago. I was like, um, I, I can't take it then. And she's like, well, why not? And I was like, and I did that thing where you try to explain it to them. But the type of people who when you try to explain it and they've already said something, they've already made up their mind. And she's one of those people. <sighs> And it went on for like 10 minutes and as this is going on, I'm getting more stressed out, my pain is getting worse, and I'm just like, I need to go take my medication. And she wouldn't let me, so I was like, okay, I'm going down to the office, and I walked out the room. And I went and took my medication, and then I went to the office, and I was like, okay, Mr. Principal Man, who I will also leave name out of because I'm that type of person who I don't put people's names in because it's kind of rude. I need to talk to you because it took me 15 minutes to convince this crazy woman that I need to go take my medication. And so a whole investigation started and I switched classes. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, medication is a hassle at school. Especially if, you're te especially if you haven't talked to your teachers ahead of time. Like, I had already talked to her, but she has like a wall that she's just like, nope, nothing's getting past here. Nope, I didn't hear that last time. But a lot, a lot of times your teachers won't know that you're on medication because usually you take it before you get into that specific class because if you have like five classes total every other day like you're the odds of you hitting that class are like slim to none especially like in that class but you need to tell your teachers about it because if all of a sudden it comes up like I need to go take my medication right now and your teachers have no idea what you're talking about sometimes they'll think that you're drinking or you're on drugs of some kind that is not prescribed or the wrong kind of prescription, which has happened to me before, actually. Um, another fun story, which I, I will save for a, a later video. But they'll think that you're doing something that's illegitimate when it's just a very innocent thing where it's just like, I need to go take my medication so I don't die. <sighs> anyway, let's move on to stuff that's kind of like, it's not out of school, but it's, it's affiliated with school, but it's not like directly in the school. <sighs> I'm sure a lot of you, if you have like a teenage disability thing, have this problem. Volunteering. <laughs> I have 22 of my 40 volunteer hours, all of which are from medical studies. And I realized that I'm going into my grade 12 year. English is my first language, can you tell? I'm going into my grade 12 year in less than four months, less than three months actually now, oh god. Um, but in less than three months, I am going into my grade 12 year, and I need to get those other 18 hours. And I started looking up accessible volunteer work for teenagers. And all of them came up as, like, stuff teenagers could volunteer for that had to do with other people having disabilities. But there are literally no options for people our age with disabilities to do volunteer work. So... I was like, okay, well, I'm fucked. I need to go talk to my guidance counselor. So I did. And it turns out that I don't know if it's like this in other schools, but I'm pretty sure it is. You can actually volunteer with a teacher inside of your school and they can give you volunteer hours. And it could be the simplest thing as like helping to mark tests, handing out papers, answering questions, or writing stuff on the board while they are teaching. It just kind of depends on the teacher and the course and your relationship with the teacher and what's going on. Um, but aside from that, if you don't have access to that, I am 
fucking sorry. <laughs> I don't know of any alternative for volunteering as a teenager with a disability because I can't find any. And if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below because I might be a little bit SOL. Um, I just, it's a mess. <laughs> uh, another thing I want to talk about, which I don't really count as being in school, but it still takes place in school, is exams. Um, this is also where IEPs come in very, very handy. This year I have four exams. Well, I had five, but I've already done my English exam. Um, I have four exams, all of which are taking place inside a GLE or tech room. Um, three of the exams I'm getting extra time for, but I am writing them by hand because they're mostly multiple choice. The last exam is going to be in the tech room because we have access to computers and I will be typing my exam. This is very important because this is the only exam that is like heavy on writing and I don't know if this happens with other other Stalin syndrome patients, but for me, if I write too long, my hand starts to shake because the muscles aren't strong enough, or I kind of dislocate my fingers while I'm writing. It's not fun. Um, but yeah, having an IEP, especially during exam season, is very helpful for extra time, for writing it on a computer, for having a very quiet room where you can do things on your own and be alone with your own thoughts without people like tapping their pencils or like humming to themselves. It's very, very helpful. Um, if you have anything that you want to know about exams or anything like that, leave a suggestion. Um, I personally will be bringing pens, pencils, body tape. <laughs> I don't know, other people probably have used it, especially with like teenage disability, depending on what your disability is. I've used KT tape or kinesio tape, and it's like this elasticy tape that kind of like you stretch it, place it, and it pulls the joint together and kind of holds it in. It almost feels like a reverse rubber band. But I'm going to be bringing that, and then I will probably be bringing a tensor bandage and a sling. <sighs> Life is hard. And then I will also keep a teacher on standby because they know that if stuff goes wrong with my hands or my shoulders or anything like that, I need to be able to verbally convey my thoughts and either have someone scribe for me or do it into like, I think it's called Dragon Speak or Dragon or something like that. It's a program where you speak and it writes it for you. I don't know. It's a very, very strange, strange world of exams for teenage disability. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to cover is they're kind of all in the same bundle. It's like exhaustion, after school naps, and homework. So, ugh. I don't know what other people have, but I personally have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and I have CFS, which is Chronic Fatigue Syndrome. And it sounds like a lot of people play it off as, oh, you're just tired, like, whatever. But it's way more than that. Like, you're exhausted mentally and physically, but you're not tired enough to properly sleep. So you're just kind of like a zombie walking around. But it's a really big problem in school because you are literally sitting at your desk exhausted and you're not taking anything in but you can't sleep because you have to stay at school and if you try and sleep you're just gonna wake up as, as exhausted as you went to sleep which is my fucking problem and I don't sleep very well but that's a side note um, and then once you get home from school especially after a bad exhaustion day you end up taking a nap. And I don't know if this happens for other people, but I like sit down on my bed, I'm like, okay, well, I'll just rest here for five minutes just to like calm myself down. And then I wake up like four hours later and like, where'd the day go? <sighs> Which leads directly into homework. I have full intentions of doing my homework most of the time. I am like, I am a very driven person. And I, especially this year, have like really pushed myself to study and stuff like that for tests. But coming home, and being like super exhausted you don't take anything in while you're trying to study you don't take anything in while you're trying to do your homework sometimes you'll forget what you've learned and then you can't do the homework sometimes you'll lie down to take a nap and that four hour nap accidentally happens and then you wake up and you're like it's 12 30 at night and i have to be up in seven hours hmm so uh, i have like some small bits of advice before this video ends on what you could possibly do in that situation and it's drink a lot of orange juice because that seems to help me a lot so I'm gonna guess it's like the vitamins and things like that 
um, take a sleep aid before you go to bed, like a proper sleep aid. My brother and I use something that's off the shelf called Sleep Ease, um, and it's a very, very helpful sleep aid. It's, it works very, very well. Um, and the last note is if you're going to take a nap after school or you know that you usually do, set an alarm for yourself two hours after you get home, or for like two hours after you get home. So say I get home at 4.30, I'd set an alarm for like 6.30 just in case I fall asleep. But yeah, no. Uh, if you need any advice or you want to ask some questions or you just want to share advice with other people, leave comments down below and I will reply to you if I think that they're cool enough for me. Anyway, this is Emily from Chronically Fabulous and I will see you later.